Hello, it's the Friday q and I've got a few questions here, so uh, I'll just get stuck in. Novabug, what failed system of the past would you have liked to see succeed? I initially thought, hold on, I answered this question in last week's video, but that was kind of more specific in referring to consoles that disappeared due to the 80s crash, so this is more flexible, so I will answer it. Um, Obviously, Vectrex is one. I answered that in last week's question. But, yeah, not limited to the 80s crash. There are two others that come to mind straight away. My first thought was Virtual Boy. I would have loved to have seen that succeed or do better. But I understand why it didn't. Its reasons for not doing well and not succeeding are valid. It, uh, it does give you a thumping headache, or many people, it certainly gives me a thumping headache. Um, the whole red display thing is limiting. The construction of it, particularly the stand, is poor. Yeah, it's got drawbacks. I love it. I love the games on it. I love the way it works. There, there is much about it that I love, and I wish it had succeeded, but I understand why it didn't. Um, did it deserve to succeed on merit? Should it have succeeded on merit? Probably not. Um, I think it's fair that it failed. There is a system that I think should have succeeded. It had everything necessary to do well, except for one thing, and that is uh, a company selling it that wasn't run by a bunch of crooks who just took the money and ran. What am I talking about? Gizmondo. The Gizmondo is a failed system that should have succeeded. It was, is, fantastic. The, it, so many features and good features. It was ahead of its time. I, <laughs> words fail me. Great games, or the ability to do great games if it was uh, developed for properly. It, it's got some great stuff on it. I mean, it's not quite up with the PSP graphically and stuff like that, but it's not far off. Um, what it needed was to be sold at a better price. I, it was overpriced, probably because it had so many features. Yeah, a better company behind it that could have taken a loss initially to be able to sell it sell more and make the money on the software rather than the hardware. Um, it, it's, it's funny, I hear a lot of people mention the Gizmondo when they're talking about worst handhelds or worst consoles or whatever of all time and I think, stupid, you've never used one, it's a failed system, it failed, the company was appalling, absolutely. But people refer, refer to it in the same, same like, sentence as the Gamecom. No! Gamecom is appalling absolute piece of junk. Gizmondo is fantastic. It was just a very, very, very badly run company. Bunch of crooks. Yeah, so uh, that is the system I really wish had succeeded. That didn't. Okay, next questions. <laughs> Four of them. From my main man skins. One. Have you ever seen the movie Hardware? It sort of reminds me of Blade Runner. If so, what do you think? Yeah, I've got it on VHS. I like it. It... It's kind of... To me, it falls not so much Blade Runner as Terminator. Um, ter Terminator meets Mad Max, I guess. It's that kind of post-apocalyptic future thing... Maybe. I suppose there is some Terminator, in, uh, some, some Blade Runner in there as well. Uh, Carl McCoy of Fields of the Nephilim as, as a character in there is kind of cool. I like a lot of things about it. I like the production values, I like the visual style. I think the directing was poor. Something about it was poor. I know it was trying to be gritty and less slick and polished than certain films. As a, as a choice, but something about it is just that there were aspects that were just not good. Yeah, so uh, I like it, but there's something wrong with it. Mm. Two, what do you think about the upcoming Twin Peaks reboot? Are you a fan of the series and David Lynch, Mark Frost? I don't actually know who Mark Frost is, but I am a fan of David Lynch, yes. I don't know what I think. Um, uh, Laura, I believe it was Laura Palmer, said 
in some scene somewhere or other, I'll see you again in 30 years. And here we are. So I think it's right. I think maybe it was even planned 30 years ago that it would be, it would start again. I don't, I suppose the thing is, I don't know what this reboot or, or whatever it's going to be is going to be. But if David Lynch is doing it, I have faith in David Lynch. He, he, I'm going to say he's never let us down. I don't know. I haven't seen all of his stuff. But what I have seen of his, I've never seen anything by him that I didn't like. I've seen stuff of his that I didn't think, wow, that's fantastic. But it always had that David Lynch feel that I wanted. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. That's about all I can say about that, really. Uh, three. What colour are your dog's noses? <laughs> Black. Both of them. Okay. Uh, four. Do you ever think about collecting different things? The video game market is nuts right now. I'm a bit of a collector of many things, but I know when to turn my back on something. No. No. Uh, I don't. I mean, I collect other things, but that's just because I've accumulated them. Books, CDs, comics, VHS. I haven't thought, I know I'm going to collect those. Um, I'm not a collector for the sake of collecting. I don't collect, it's not that I thought, I want to collect something, so I'll collect retro gaming stuff. That's not what happened. Uh, and that's not why I collect. I'm not someone who has to collect things and okay, retro stuff has got expensive now, so I'll collect something else. No, that's, that's just not how I work. Um, I find collecting for the sake of collecting kind of odd. For me, I love retro games and retro gaming and old, I mean, it initially started out with old computers. I remembered all these old computers from when I was a kid that I couldn't afford when I was a kid. And as an adult, I was finding them cheap. So I bought them, and that became a collection. Collecting for the sake of collecting. <laughs> uh, no, not. Um, moving on. Scribble Sam animation. A few questions here. One, do you think virtual reality could have saved the arcade scene? The arcade scene is dying, or at least it seems so in the UK. The Oculus Rift is expensive, and as you have proved, you can make your own VR helmet using a tablet and a helmet, some glasses, and some other stuff. But going to the arcade to play VR games could give players the VR experience at the fraction of the cost. No, I, I don't think so. Um, part of the appeal of the arcades was you could... You stood there at this machine and you'd have a crowd of people behind you watching you play. Um, and they would share the experience, they could see what you were doing. And yes, you could have a monitor there so they could see what you were doing, but they're not really sharing the experience. And it is still... you If, if it's an Oculus-powered thing, you've got cables connecting you up to it, and it's, it's fragile, and you need a handler. You've got to have a person there who's setting it up for you and stuff. It, it would not work, I, I don't believe. It would be a different thing. It wouldn't be what the arcades were about back then. The whole the whole thing would be different, and I don't think suited to the arcade thing. Is no, I don't think so. Two. I remember watching an episode of The Simpsons where Bart was trying to play virtual pool, but the other guy kept hitting with him with virtual darts. The question is really, who would want to play virtual darts? Unless they're shuriken darts, I really don't think virtual darts can replace real darts and a dartboard. Uh, I agree. <laughs> this was a, well, it's a cartoon scene, sketch, whatever, where the, 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 done for effect. Uh, the reality of it is, no, the, what, what, why would you? A lot of the, the appeal of virtual reality is you get to do things or experience things that you couldn't really do in real life. You can play darts in real life easily. It's not like you can't hop into a spaceship and kill aliens and many of us can't hop into a Ferrari and drive down the road racing people randomly. Those things virtual reality would be good for. Playing darts? No, there's no point. It, it, it would be a lesser experience. 
um, of something that you could do in the real world very easily. So, uh, who? Nah, I don't know. Three. Do you think all these FIFA and football games would make a great replacement for all these E.T. Atari games that were put into the landfill in the Sahara Desert? It wasn't the Sahara, but anyway, yes, point taken. Uh, if you go to any video game shop that sells retro games, you'll probably see a huge pile of football games like FIFA ISS on consoles like PlayStation 2, Xbox, SNES, etc. Clearly nobody wants them. Unless you're a real hardcore football fan who must collect almost everything football related from a football SNES game to an out of date can of Pepsi with David Beckham's face on it, who would want to play a FIFA 2003 on the PS2 or FIFA 1994 on the SNES when you can play FIFA 2015 on the Xbox One? They're all pretty much the same game, only difference being the dates, and apart from that, most of these games are not in good condition anyway. Is this a question? Um, it is a statement that I agree with completely. Uh, yes. <laughs> Four. Have you ever been rickrolled? No. Birdie, 1980. Does the missus give you critique or comment on the videos you produce? And if so, what is her take on them? Thank you in advance. Um, no, she doesn't. Um... Unless I specifically ask her to watch a video, she doesn't really watch them. This is something that I'm not going to say it makes me sad. I suppose at the end of the day, she's not into retro gaming in any great way. Uh, so these don't really interest her. And it's like someone saying to me, hey, you should watch... No, you should play this Japanese RPG. I ain't interested. So uh, for me to do that, I would be bored. And I don't want to bore my wife by asking her to do something, or watch something I know she's not really interested in. I mean, it is a pity. But, you know, that's the way it is. I, she watches my other videos, like Benway's World stuff. She will watch those. If I, if I put a, a video... On Benway's World. I generally put it on to my friends and family Facebook. I've got two Facebook accounts, one for you lot and one for just my friends and family in the real world. And uh, I put my Benway's World stuff on there sometimes. And if I do that, she'll watch that. But my gaming stuff, no, because it, it, it doesn't interest her. So um, she doesn't, and I don't ask her to. Geiger Punk, does your wife or anyone else in your family, wait a minute. <laughs> watch your videos or is your gaming and your videos your own private thing if sharing with thousands of okay I think I just answered that <laughs> yeah uh, my my family and my wife they don't watch my gaming stuff not unless I specifically ask them and generally I don't uh, my Benway's World stuff yeah my wife watches that um, my my stepdaughter, Catherine, she watches um, my Isambard Montague videos. Uh, she really, really likes them. I don't do them very often these days. I've just kind of... He's sort of run his course, and unless something specific comes to mind... God knows, there's plenty of stuff I could do with him at the moment. But it's kind of like, with him, you get the point. <laughs> he takes the piss out of the Tories by behaving like a Tory, uh, and there's only so far you can take that joke before it gets old. So uh, some there has to be something very specific before I, I do an Isambard video now. Um, but yeah, she, she likes his stuff a lot, which is cool. Gaming History Source Hey Steve, if you could choose one actor or actress to have lunch with, who would it be? For me, it would have to be Anthony Hopkins. For the simple fact that he has a brilliant mind, and I would love to get his opinions on a few things. Plus, he's quite an accomplished orchestral composer. <clears throat> Do you know what? There isn't one. I, I've had, I, I've thought about it. I sort of sat and pondered, and I don't. I don't. I mean, I'm not going to call it celebrity worship. I don't care what celebrities think about a thing, really. 
um, or, or actors. To me, a good actor is good because they can appear to be someone else. And I appreciate them for that skill. Or they're a film star and they're, I mean, Clint Eastwood. I love Clint Eastwood, but you always, you know, Clint Eastwood is just Clint Eastwood. He's not an actor, he's a film star. And you get a lot of those, and I, I like the character, the, you know, their, their charisma and their screen presence, and I like that. But uh, I don't care what they think about a thing, that's not what I appreciate them for. And they might be very intelligent and have good opinions on things, but that's not why I watch them. Um, so I don't really... There are some... There are lots of actors and film stars that I, I think love what you do. Maybe, maybe shallow, love the way you look. Um, there are some who are either incredibly handsome or incredibly gorgeous. Uh, but that would be kind of lame to sit there having a meal with someone just because it's like they drool, gorgeous. No. Uh, probably be quite uncomfortable actually. No, um, there, there, there isn't because I don't view actors and film stars or, or celebrities in that way. I have met some celebrities, uh, TV celebrities in person and I actually didn't find them particularly pleasing to be around. I, uh, in person they were really irritating because they're hyper, that, that's their, their screen persona. You'll see this on, on popular daytime television. Many TV presenters are, I mean, when they've got their celebrity face on, I would hope they calm down when they get home. But these ones that I met were very, they had their, their, their on-screen persona on, and they were jumpy and jittery and excitable. And I was just thinking, for f shut up. Calm down, you're being a twat. Um, and I absolutely wouldn't want to have dinner with any of them. Certainly one of them was in a very pleasing eye candy, which, shallow. Um, yeah, it's a very well-known female celebrity who... Very easy on the eye, but kind of just really, you're thinking, sit down, slow down, shut up, you're behaving like a child. And that's how they are. So, uh, no. Wow, that's going into an awful lot of detail, isn't it? Can't answer the question. That There just isn't any, you know, don't want to. <clears throat> I'd rather sit down and have dinner with my wife. And there's a thing, actually, I don't like eating in front of people, largely, in company. I, I hate going out for meals in restaurants with people. <laughs> I do it with my wife, because she's... We get each other, but... uh yeah, not my thing. I don't eat socially. I eat because I'm hungry. Um, okay, <clears throat> AC 5015 or 5015 or 5,000, there, you get the point. Um, with the modern horsepower of consoles and computers, have games stopped being games and crossed over to being simulations? And a follow-up to that question, if you would indulge me a second one. Yes, I would. What defines a video game, or what makes something a game? Examples, Space Invaders and Pac-Man have graphical representations and simple rules. But then you go modern game, what? But then you go modern games, FPSs, or even games like Gran Turismo. Very complicated rules, more of an experience of living vicariously through, and it cut you off there, so, um, uh, have games stopped being games and crossed over to being simulations? Um, some have, but I'm kind of actually going to answer both of those questions in one, because it's kind of two sides of the same question. Um, to me, uh, Gran Turismo is still a game. Because, yes, it is a simulation in many respects. It has... It simulates the physics of driving, but not completely. 
because if it was a true simulation, if you ran into the wall or another car, you would wreck your car and it would stop working. And many people complain about this. And I think you're making a mistake. There will be many, many people who will disagree with me, and that's fine. But it is a game. And if you were to be racing and you hit another car or the wall and your car broke and you were unable to complete the race, that would be less fun than losing a bit of time but carrying on. You're playing the game because you want to race, you want to play the game. You don't want to have to stop because you crashed. Um, and that's the thing. It's not, and, and many other of these games, they simulate real world physics, but they have limitations on the simulation that allow for a break with reality. Um, you respawn. You, you die in your first person shooter, but you respawn. So, uh, yeah, there's not much simulation going on there. The, 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 uh, the inability to fully, completely die. That's what makes it a game. It is the unrealism. Uh, there, is a, it is, there is a great deal of simulation in a great many modern games. And they're simulating the physics. But what they don't do is simulate the reality. And it is that break with reality that makes it a game and not just a simulator. If you go into a, a military simulator, flight sim, it simulates everything down to if you get shot down, you get shot down. That's the end of simulation and then you go and review what went wrong. And it certainly isn't fun, I would imagine. The reality frequently is not fun. Frequently reality sucks. A simulation is a game when it's fun. You go onto a battlefield, any battlefield you care to mention, and go and shoot people and kill people and then get shot or blown up and your gut spewed everywhere or your head blown off or you lose a leg or you lose any of the reality see your mate killed next to you blown up whatever the reality of a situation like that is horrific battlefield 4 is fantastically good fun that's why it's a game they take the reality out of the simulation uh, yeah, that's 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 really why it is still a game. Wow, that's quite a deep question actually, and the answer can be quite. That depends how deep you want to go with it, really. Mark is fifty-one fifty. Two questions for you. One, what do you think of the old side scroller shooter called Moon Patrol, from the early eighties? Did, you, did it ever click with you? Were you ever good at it? Were you a fan of its gameplay mechanics while shooting at all the stuff in the game? It's one of my favourites ever. Yes, I, I like that game. Um, I really, really sucked at it back in the day. I didn't... I won't, Yeah, I didn't get the hang of it. The problem I had was not having enough money to spend on it to learn the attack patterns of the, the aliens. Um, because a certain amount of it is just reflexes, and I wasn't terrible at that, Re reflex gaming, you know, as a teen, I was okay. But learning attack patterns took an amount of practice, and I didn't have the money to practice to learn the attack patterns. So generally I died quite quickly, so I never got good at it. But I did like it, and I like it now, um, because I'm able to spend a bit more time on it and realise, hey, actually what they're doing isn't that complicated. Um, you know, it, it, initially things look random, but then you watch for a bit longer and you're like, ah, I suppose I could have watched other people playing it, but it was frustrating to watch someone else play when I wanted to play. But now, yeah, I like it a lot. Question two. You're given a new powerful 2014 PC, along with three games of your choice to own. <clears throat> Whether they must... Whether they be must-have games or ones that just have you curious, which would those be? Um, <clears throat> I actually can't answer that question because I don't follow PC gaming. I, I don't know what the modern PC games are. I no idea. So, uh, I, uh, I get... Wait, no, Elite Dangerous. 
because I like Elite and I've seen videos of it um, mostly via um, what Kate does on Twitter and I can't remember what name she uses on YouTube but she does some because she's got an Oculus Rift and uh, she, she's put up videos uh, and I think that looks really cool. Yes, if I had a twenty uh, a powerful PC, I'd want an Oculus Rift with it, and I would want to play Elite Dangerous. Other games I would play on it. If I had the time, Minecraft, it doesn't need the power, but it's a fun game. But then I've got Minecraft on here, and I can play that, and I don't, because I don't have the time. I would lose my life to that game. What else? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, okay. So I can answer this question. Half-Life 2. Uh, no. No, no, okay. Actually, scrap Minecraft. We'll have Half Life 2 just because I love it. And um, Crisis 1, the first one, uh, because I've got it and my PC is not powerful enough to play it. <laughs> Even my old PC, I got to the boss battle at the very end of the game and it, the, the frame rate just chugged. It, it became unplayable and I was not able to beat the final boss because my frame rate just dropped so low. That was a shame. Yeah, so uh, Elite Dangerous, Half-Life 2 and what I just said. <laughs> mental block, or just mental crisis. That. Yeah, okay. Mark Hopper. Virtual Boy Emulator for Cardboard. Is that a question? It does. Okay. Uh, 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 are you saying there is one? Or... I know nothing about this. If, if there is a Virtual Boy Emulator for Google Cardboard to run on Android with twin images, I'm going to have to look that up. If it exists, I don't know about it. Uh, I think I would love that. I would have to have a go. I mean, yes, I've got a real Virtual Boy, but I haven't got all of the games for it. I think that would be a very good thing to have. It wouldn't match up to the proper dedicated virtual reality games that you can get for Google Cardboard because head tracking and stuff. And it would probably actually require a particular kind of controller because the 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 hell would that even work I don't know you have got like multiple two d-pads and multiple buttons either side I don't know if it's doable um, because of the controller interesting I, I would like that I'm gonna have to look and see if such a thing exists but uh, yeah interesting idea Daniel Cordell what is your number one worst annoyance out of the you shoulders or Facebook invites if you could only choose one to hate the most? Yeah, I can answer that very easily. You should play Forza whatever on the Xbox 3. In fact, they don't even specify, but it's it's an Xbox 360 or Xbone game. I should play Forza whatever. That's the one that pisses me off because I don't have an Xbone. I don't have an Xbox 360. I love Gran Turismo and they're trying to say this game is better than Gran Turismo. Play it on the system that you don't own. Uh, ticks me off greatly. I imagine some of these people just don't know that I don't own the Xbox type stuff. Um, you know, probably not their fault, but it just annoys the crap out of me because so many people say it, especially when I play Gran Turismo. Um, yeah, I have to restrain myself and refrain from being quite rude <laughs> and telling them where to go. Uh, I can be a stroppy bastard sometimes. Ben S. Hi Steve, other than the Mega Drive, what other consoles are worth buying that are not too expensive and have decent games? Have you got any strange odd controllers, consoles or anything else in your collection? Okay, um, other console worth buying, not cheap, not, not expensive, good game selection. Yes, that's actually really, really, really easy. PS2, it's not especially retro, it's why I didn't answer it in my previous video. Um, you have a, a, it's cheap, it's 
fairly reliable. You've got big models, small models, you know, different versions of it. And as far as I'm aware, they're all fairly reliable. Um, I'm st I still have my first PS2, the big fat one, um, and I love it. I think it's great. I've got a. What am I have only got the two, haven't I? I lose track. Yeah, I've got me original fat one. I've got a slim one. You can pick them up dirt cheap. Disc drives on them seem to be certainly more reliable than the early PS1, where the, they tended to have drive failures. And you, you, you PS, they're PS1 compatible as well. You can they're backward compatible with the PS1. So you have a massive selection of games you can play on them. Uh, quality stuff. Gran Turismo. Uh, that that would be my uh, recommendation because you, I don't consider the PS2 to be particularly retro. It's old-ish, you know, it's dated, it's not current, but it's not quite retro yet. But you can play PS1 on it if you really want something retro. And you can, as was said in a, a previous comment when I didn't refer to the PS2, you can get your compilations, your arcade compilations, um, by many different companies, you know, Williams, Namco, Capcom, blah, 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 loads of them. All your old arcade games, or a great many of them, you can play on the PS2. Um, yeah, I, I, I would say if you were only ever going to have two consoles in your say collection, you know, two consoles, Mega Drive would be my first suggestion, and then PS2. Um, and that would cover a very wide variety of game types, styles, eras, you name it. Um, great point to start from, I think. Uh, have I got any strange or odd controllers? Um, yeah, I don't collect controllers, but I do accumulate them every now and then. Strange ones. Well, I've got this funny chainsaw one for the PS2 that goes with one of the uh, Resident Evil in it. Yeah, it's the chainsaw controller for one of those Resident Evil games. I haven't got the game. I've never used a controller. I, just, um, And it's in like a glass display case. Glass, it's probably plastic. Display case. It sits up in the loft somewhere. Um, and I've got a, a, a fishing rod controller for, I think it's Sega, some bass fishing game. Which uh, I've used it, and I actually find I can play the game more effectively just using a normal joypad. It was an amusing novelty. Um, it's it, I'm frustrated by fishing games, actually. I mean, the controller aside, I used to go fishing a lot. But it, the fishing games that you get, are they're American fishing, or... They're just not the kind of fishing that I do. Bass, we don't have bass in British waters. I mean, uh, roach, tench, carp, perch, pike, rudd, bream, carp, all that kind of thing. And I, I'm unaware of any angling games on consoles for those kind of fish. So when I play Super Mega Bass Fishing number 56, blah, blah, I'm like, uh, I don't care about this kind of fishing. It's not what I do. Well, went on a bit about that, way off topic. But yes, got a fishing controller, got a chainsaw controller. Okay, the EEPROM 9. Are there any skill sets you don't currently have that you would like to learn? What would be your ideal job? There are lots of skill sets I don't have. What, what would I particularly like? I don't actually know. I wish I had a skill set. And I'd, what would be my ideal job? This. <laughs> I wish I could earn a decent living from doing this. Um, and I can't. I, I scratch. A, a, it's not even a pittance from this. Couldn't live on it. Um, skill set. I... I I tell you what, no, the skill set I would like uh, isn't even work related. I, I wish I had better social skills. I wish I didn't find being around people so damned uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, I wish I didn't feel like I was born on the wrong planet. Because most of the time I do. That, that would be a good skill set to have. <laughs> Normal social skills in the real world. Yeah, I'd like that. Mm. 
do you do love lasers do i love la lasers are cool um uh, i don't i don't wait do i have a laser pointer not exactly though this thing apparently has one can i turn it on how do i turn it on where's the are the batteries yay yeah this this little uh thing has a laser pointer on it i'm not going to point it at the at the uh directly at the camera. Yeah, I never use it, though uh, I, I don't have a use for a laser, uh, except maybe tormenting the cats or the dogs. And I don't mean firing it at them, I mean giving them a dot to chase around. Um, but, I mean, I love the idea of the lasers that you get in old sci-fi, you know, lasers as weapons. Fascinating, though the reality of that would be horrific. Uh, but they're not something I give a great deal of thought to, really. Mark the Morose. Besides games that people send you, what are the criteria you use when choosing what games to make videos of? Is it a spur-of-the-moment thing, whatever catches your eye, or playing something you've been meaning to try for a while anyway? Or do you go with recommendations, apart from, hey Steve, you should play game X, Y, blah, blah. Because it's awesome, bruv. <laughs> Which I know you hate. Yeah, I do. Beyond the occasional series like Gran Turismo, there isn't an obvious pattern. I am going to couple this question with one from Leo DS. Why are you on a Mega Drive fever right now? <coughs> okay. You are absolutely right. There is no pattern whatsoever. And it's very, very rarely that I play a game based on a recommendation. I try and remember when someone's recommended something so that when I, I, I'm doing that system, I might look up or play that game. But, uh, <clears throat> no, that there is no pattern. It is, I do them in batches, or rather, I have a particular system that I have out for a particular, for, for an amount of time. I've got, I'm doing the Mega Drive shooter games at the moment. Why am I doing that? Because it's easy. Because I was able to, I spent a day just recording. Mm, how do I explain? I had the PS1 out for quite a while. I, I got a chipped PS1. I downloaded a whole load of PS1 games, burned them to, to ROMs and played those games. And I've got a few that I haven't played yet. And it was easy. It was easy to do that. And making videos takes a big chunk of time. And so I try and do stuff that's not going to take too much time where I can maybe do it in batches or just not take up my whole day. Um, PS1 is easy. Stuff that I can just put into my PS3 is easy. So like PS3, PS2, PS1. Um, <clears throat> but I've done the PS1 and then I thought, OK, what, else, what have I got where I can... I don't need to mess around with tape loading or unreliable floppy disks or have to look up the manual or a sheet of paper with instructions because I can't remember how to load the games. Um, so I got the Mega Drive out <coughs> with the EverDrive cartridge and I looked through all the games on it and some are... some take an amount of learning. Shoot 'em ups really don't. You can You can load a shoot 'em up game and you know you've got a spaceship, you move it around, you fire at whatever it is, be it horizontal or vertical, and you try and kill them and not get shot by the enemies and their bullets and things. And I spent a day where I just recorded about 12 shoot 'em ups or it was mostly shoot 'em ups. I mean there was the Barbie game and, and whatever. And so I just had a, a big stock of games and I've been uploading them one a day. They're, they're all pre-recorded from about two weeks ago. And that's how I do it. I, I just I pick a system to get out and record either a bunch of games all in one go or I'll keep it out. And then I just I look for games that I think I'm going to be able to play 
with the minimum of effort, the minimum of time spent. Time is short. I, I don't have the time to learn a game, to learn complicated instructions. I want to be able to just plug it in and play it. And <clears throat> I'm clearly not going to play it well. But it, it needs that instant playability. I might not get very far, but I'm not going to be sitting there reading a manual or going through a mass of menus. Um, I mean, someone someone complained at me that I don't appear to put in the time and effort to find out, to, to learn the game or get further into it. Well, no, I don't. And that's just how it is. It is all about the first impressions. And if my first impression is, I can't get very far at this because it's kicking my ass, maybe that means I miss more impressive later levels. But that's the reality of it. Um, I'm not going to learn the game for the sake of making a longer or better video. It might be more entertaining for my viewers if I learned it, but then you're not getting the first impression, and it is all about the first impression. That doesn't make for a good review. Granted, absolutely, but I'm not doing reviews. Um, but that, yeah, really, that's how I choose games. What is going to be the easiest for me? Might not make the best video. Um, and I do try and change it. I'm, I'm on a Mega Drive thing at the moment anyway. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the Mega Drive shoot 'em ups. And I've, I've almost run through my stock of pre recorded videos, so I'm going to do some more. And it's going to be more Mega Drive shoot 'em ups because I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying doing them. They're easy to do, they're fun. They kick my ass. I don't give the best demonstration of the game. Too bad. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I was going to say something else and I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you, uh, yes, and the, the other thing with that is, and another reason for me to stick with the Mega Drive shooters for uh, at least another week, subscribers. I'm, I've am i been struggling for months now to get more than a couple of subscribers a day uh, since doing the Mega Drive stuff, the shooters. I, I, it, Views aren't up especially high, but I'm gaining new subscribers, and I can only put it down to these videos that I'm doing at the moment. And I want more subscribers, and if doing Mega Drive shoot 'em ups pulls them in, I'll do some more. Yeah, but uh, you know, it will reach a point where I think, right, I've done enough of them. Maybe views will drop off, and I'll assume, okay, people are bored with this, and then I'll pick another system. Couldn't tell you what it will be. There, the, I keep meaning to. Go back to BBC Micro, because I've got a, a like a flash, compact flash thing on there that makes it easy to load games. Um, and I've got to load more games on there that I haven't yet done videos of. And the same with the Commodore 64. And in fact, uh, the, the SD card solution I've got on my 64, I can also use on my VIC-20 and C16. So sooner or later, expect videos of those. And I will do them in like a, a, a group, a clump a series if you like. Yeah, and then I'll I'll you know, I'll look around for something else to to get out and set up. And I only ever have one system set up apart from like down there I've got PS3, Xbox, Dreamcast, Wii are all set up all the time and plugged in so I can turn any one of those on um and play. But anything else I it sits on the floor down there, or if I have to put it on this little desk here, well, that's just a pain in the ass. So things don't, unless I can find somewhere convenient to put them, uh, things don't stay out for especially long, and I only ever have one one system out other than those ones that are sitting down there. Um, hence, I do things in batches. Yeah, that you will never notice an obvious pattern because there isn't one. It's just what I just described and explained. I hope I explained it adequately because that was a lot of rambling. <clears throat> okay, Slenkar. I would like to know a bit more about you and the Specky. When did you first get one? Which games did you play on it back in the day? Okay, I didn't own a Spectrum back in the day. 
But I did play them. Most of my friends had Spectrums. Not all of them. I had one friend who had a uh, Commodore 64 and a Dragon 32 before that. In fact, two friends who had Dragon 32s. Most of my friends had Spectrums, though. Um, I first got one in about 1997-ish, thereabouts, and that was as a retro system. Uh from a car boot sale, if I remember rightly. Can't remember what I paid for it. Still got it. Six, no, 48k rubber keyboard jolly. Um, but what did I play back in the day? Jetpack. I played Jetpack. I played a little bit of Manic Miner. Didn't like it. A little bit of Jet Set Willy. Didn't like it. I played Zoom. Didn't think much of that. Played... Um, 3D Monster, no, 3D Death Chase, love it. Actually, I, th I believe it's actually just called Death Chase, but everyone calls it 3D Death Chase because it says 3D down the side of the, or somewhere on the sleeve. Um, 3D Ant Attack, love it. Uh, assorted Space Invader games and Defender games and Missile Command type games. Uh, of varying different qualities, and I can't remember the names of any of them. Uh, Hungry Horus, loved it. Horus Goes Skiing, not so much. Probably played Horus and the Spiders, but I can't remember that. can't remember what that was like. Uh, yeah, so I mean, most of the Spectrum stuff I played was the earlier stuff. Oh, Monsters in Hell. It's a terrible game, and I love it. Um... Yeah, I mean, later Spectrum games were more capable, more impressive. You know, they, they did some stuff with it. Oh, 3D Star Strike. Love that. Yeah, they, they did stuff that was technically more impressive later on. But by then, I'd already I'd got an Acorn Electron by then and, and different kind of games altogether. So, yeah, the Spectrum games I'm familiar with are the really early ones from the 16 and early 48k era. None of the later 128k stuff. Nothing. None of the fancy, clever stuff. It was all pretty primitive. But I, I like those the best. Martin Sutcliffe. Favourite 6 bit Favourite 16 bit shoot 'em ups. Horizontal and vertical scrollers. Don't know. <laughs> I I just don't know. Uh, I can't think of any... Horizontal... You, you see, there's a thing. My favourite horizontal scrolling shoot 'em up isn't even 16-bit. I guess if I had to say my favourite 16-bit horizontal, it would be um, Thunder Force 4. I like Thunder Force 4 a lot because it's visually gobsmacking. I'm crap at it. I've never got very far on it. But I like it just for that wow factor. Nothing makes me go wow in a horizontal shooter on a 16-bit on a system more than Thunder Force 4. Just for the visual oomph. But that's not my favourite scrolling shoot -em up My favourite is an 8-bit and it is Scramble. Arcade game. Uh, I love it. I absolutely love Scramble. It was the first scrolling horizontal scrolling shoot -em up and to me it is still my favourite. Vertical, vertical scrolling shooter, I really don't know. Um, it's not, it's not a genre that I have spent any real amount of time playing. You know, beyond making these videos and maybe a couple of goes every now and then. No, uh, oh, no. you see I was just thinking of um, that's, not, that's 32 bit <laughs> thingy, radiant silver gun, but that's not 16 bit. Couldn't tell you, really don't know. I mean, the only one I can think of is Truxton right now, and I, I, I'm not a fan of Truxton. It's perhaps the most memorable. What was that? Was it Swiv? Oh, I played it on the Archimedes, something like that, but I didn't really do it. No, I, I can't give a better answer than that, and it's a Poor answer. There, there's nothing that sticks in my memory enough to say, yeah, that one. Sorry about that. Uh, final question, and this isn't gaming related at all. David James Log? Logue? Um, 
Did you used to go to the 90s raves or acid house parties, etc.? What is your whole take on the rave culture? <clears throat> no, I didn't. Uh, I, I don't do and did not do <sighs> raves. Uh, wasn't interested in that. The... I did acid once. I've, uh, I've talked about this in the past. I did acid once in my life, uh, but it wasn't at a rave. I never went to raves or anything like that. The nearest thing I went to that kind of thing, because most, I, I was going to say, I'm not into rave music. I'm not into that kind of, I like a certain kind of electronic music, but not that. I liked early Acid House, and I mean the stuff before Acid. That was fucking awful and not Acid House at all. I like the stuff with the wobbly bass line that was so deep. <coughs> It made it feel like you were going to crap yourself. The bass was so deep and wobbly that you, you, you would feel this trum trembling in your bowels that was quite worrying. Um, I liked that. I liked the whole wobbly bass line thing from the Acid House music. Um, but I never went to the raves. The nearest thing I went to that kind of thing was a, a thing that used to happen in Milton Keynes called a Woods Party. They were completely illegal. Um, they... I don't know how they managed to get away with it. There was an area, a picnic area, in Bow Brick Hill Woods, very near to Woburn Sands Golf... its famous golf course. Very near there. There was a picnic area in the woods, up a very steep hill. It was fairly isolated. It wasn't especially easy to get to. And there was this club that I used to go to called the Counterpoint, where they would have live bands. It, it was very much alternative counterculture. Hippie, druggy kind of bands. Bit of goth, bit of, bit of punk, bit of... It was all pretty left field stuff. Um, local bands, some uh, Magic Mushroom band, they, they turned up. There was a band called Click Click, they were fantastic. The, the bands that went to this club. Um, and every once in a while in the summer, it would be very, very secret, hush hush, but word got around without there ever being any printed material or, or publicity. And it all went via this club. Woods party tonight. Pass it on. But make sure the coppers don't find out. Don't let the management of the club find out. And after whatever band had been playing at the club had finished, they would take all of the gear, the lighting rig, the PA, and I don't know what else, stick it in a bunch of vans and lorries and stuff, and they would cart it off to Bow Brick Hill Woods with a generator or five. And uh, you'd go along get yourself there and it wasn't an easy place to get to especially if you didn't drive you'd go along up this really steep hill through the woods into the picnic area and you'd sit and wait several hours while they'd set up the stage they'd set up the PA they'd set up the lighting you'd have loads of booze there, there were like vans selling well there was a van selling sausages and mash <laughs> I remember being sitting in the in the woods in the middle of the night eating sausages and mash and the, these the, the parties went all night. You know, it would be Friday night or Saturday night. I can't remember what night it was. I think it was Friday. You, you'd go down there that, that night and you would, you know, it ran until daylight. And they were brilliant. I went to a few of them. I went to one on my own. I went mostly with friends. And, you know, campfires everywhere. It was a kind of a natural amphitheatre. The stage was down there and everyone was in uh, up in the trees with a little campfire. There weren't tents, but the, you could build a shelter. I did that. <laughs> Someone tripped over it. They didn't see it and fell into my shelter. Um, it was bloody brilliant. I mean, you, you, drugs. There was loads of drugs. Uh, there were people stoned out of their faces or tripping on another planet. And God knows what else. I don't know. Um, you know, there were lots of very dodgy characters around. Um, but it was 
it was fantastic and I mean the music was generally great and generally you were that either drunk or out of your face on something that even if the music hadn't been great you would have loved it but it, it was quite an experience um, yeah that's the nearest I ever came to any of this rave culture it was a different thing it was live music it wasn't rave but it was similar to the acid house thing that the rave thing at that time it, it was an Ill illegal music party but it was outside and it generally did get broke up by the police in the morning they were polite enough to um you know they they didn't they didn't ruin the night they would just move us on in the morning it was always in the papers you know that there had been an illegal woods party and what an outrage it was and all the all the the mess that we left and the damage that we caused and blah 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 I, I don't know if that was just I, I imagine there was an amount of litter got left and that there would be like fire burned out fires that were left like campfires and stuff that probably someone had to clear up if people hadn't cleared up their own either I tended I took my own mess away with mess like I, was, I wasn't crapping in the woods um, you know, anything I took, I took home with me. I was a responsible partier. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, there tended to be outrage when really we were minding our own business. It wasn't like some rave where we were keeping the locals awake. There were no locals. We were in the middle of the woods as far away from anywhere as we could possibly get. But there there were still complaints. And... and uh, it was a Tory government at that time, and they brought in some anti-rave law. I mean, it was, it was a, it was supposed to be an anti-rioting law that they used, but they used this law inappropriately, I believe, to break up raves. I mean, it was quite an oppressive time. I think we're heading that way now, but uh, yeah. That they, they we didn't get given a hard time really. Cops would come along in the morning, move us on. Not a problem. Loved it. And that was the final question. Um, so yes, if you have any questions, please put for Friday at the start of your question so that when I come along later to... to uh, I copy and paste them all onto a text file. And I do that just before I record this. Yeah, put for Friday at the start of your question uh, so that I can see it and copy and paste it. There does seem to have been a thing, I haven't answered every single question that I received this week because there seems to be a thing where people are putting for Friday and then not actually asking a question, or I seem to have answered one of those here, but making a statement, like uh, giving me a topic. Um, please don't do that. This isn't the Friday talkie and I, I, I don't wish to be given a topic to talk on. Uh, I'm just here to answer questions. <laughs> so, um, the media. That's not a question. Um, I don't know what you're expecting me to say on that. Uh, yeah, uh, that's not what I'm doing. This isn't the Friday talkie and I'm not doing that. So yeah, um, questions. That's what I'm here for. It is a QA. and a You ask a question, I will answer it. You make a statement, I'm just going to look at it and go, huh? mm, Okay. I had a feeling there was something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember for the life of me what it was now, so I guess I won't be saying that. Um, uh, uh, kind of like a ending on a Friday talky thing, what's coming up? Well, I think I've covered that actually. It's more Mega Drive shoot 'em ups. And it may not all be shoot 'em ups, but it's certainly more Mega Drive because I'm enjoying it and it's easy and it's pulling in the subscribers, which is good. I like, I like it when the subscriber rate of increase increases I don't know what I'm saying I'll shut up now thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider clicking the thumbs up button I upload videos daily so go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more to all those who've already subscribed I'd just like to say a great big thank you